Hey GearSeek, as I'm Nick. You may have noticed that we didn't release a performance review when the 6700 XT launched. Well, this is because I felt like it wasn't really fair to talk about another new GPU without talking about the availability in some capacity, which as predicted again, despite what AMD said about it going to be, and they said it was going to be available, but it's not. Now, we, we didn't decide this to pander to you guys as the audience. We wanted to see what the real pricing would be like if it did in fact launch with availability, which it didn't. However, guys, we're a YouTube channel. We make videos about the latest tech. We still want to share the performance with you for when you will be able to get your hands on one of these. With that said, PowerColor sent over one of their Hellhound 6700 XTs for us to check out. So we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux to see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio. So yeah, let's do that. As far as availability of this particular 6700 XT from PowerColor, from what I've seen, there's basically nothing. Now, the point of this video is really about the performance and to cure my own curiosity. I spoke to a couple of other YouTubers with their experiences with this card before it launched and even before I'd even had a chance to test one myself. And yeah, we test in our own way. So yeah, let's do that. As usual, there's chapters in all of our videos. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of the video, it's as easy as mousing over that progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch this whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say. These are the out of the box figures only. And for people who wanna know how these overclocked, we're gonna come back and check this out in a separate video when the drivers get a little bit better because uh, they were just a bit hit and miss in Windows. I'll come back to that. I've got more to talk about that a bit later, but let's get the benchmarks comparisons out of the way. The graphs change because the cards perform differently and some cards get knocked down off the graphs. We use our regular suite of benchmarks to test all of these cards to give you guys accurate results based on our testing hardware. And I suspect we will be retesting everything again soon. So let's, let's get into the first one. All right, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use the magic little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at the graphs for longer. The first thing you're probably noticing is that at 1080p, the PowerColor 6700 XT is topping out our pool of GPUs. These are mostly the same cards that you'll see for the rest of the test as well. In Linux at 1080p, the Hellhound also tops out the graph. Be aware that this kernel combo and this pre-release driver is the only combo that worked at the time of testing. Comparing Windows vs Linux at 1080p, Linux comes out on top and this is pretty normal for Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. In Windows at 1440p, we're seeing the 6700 XT equal the Asus Dual 3070. If we look at Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the Hellhound come in just behind the 2080 Ti. If we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing Windows come out on top. At 4K, we're seeing the performance come in just above the 3060 Ti Founders Edition. And if you look down the stack to see how it compares to the 5700 XT, it's considerably faster. A mid-range AMD card that's breaking the 4K 60 barrier is really good to see on a performance level. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the Hellhound coming in just behind the 3060 Ti and equaling the 2080 Super. If we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing that Windows came out on top once again. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, a 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with motion blur and depth of field turned off. First up with a 1080p extreme benchmark. This one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the Hellhound come in right in the middle of the 2080 and the 2070 Super. Linux at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing the 6700 XT equal the 2080. Comparing Windows and Linux, Windows comes out on top. At 1440p in Windows, the 6700 XT comes in just behind the 2080. But in Linux at 1440p, the Hellhound is a single frame behind the 2080 Ti. Comparing Windows to Linux, the 6700 XT is about 5 frames slower in Linux. 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6700 XT coming behind the 1080 Ti by a single frame. And that 1080 Ti still goes really hard. In Linux at 4K, the 6700 XT comes in behind the 3060 Ti by a single frame. If we compare Windows to Linux at 4K, we're seeing them perform within a few frames of each other. 
Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and in Linux. At 1080p in Windows, the Hellhound crawls up into a ball, falls off a cliff, and explodes spectacularly. Now, I'm calling this one a failure, and the reason why I say that is, in Basemark GPU, we had a lot of driver stability issues, and this was the only valid run that we got off it. And you can tell because the 5700 XT performs better than the 6700 XT, which doesn't seem right. In Linux at 1080p, the Hellhound had more of a predictable run. AMD GPUs typically don't perform well in Basemark, however in Linux this one was giving us the result that we expected. Now if we compare Windows to Linux, I'm going to call the Windows run invalid again. Until we get more driver stability, I'm going to concede that this run is a fail in Windows. 1440p in Windows we had no driver stability issues and this is about where we expected to see the 6700 XT anyways. In Linux at 1440p we're seeing the 6700 XT start to fight back. If we compare Windows to Linux, we can see that in Windows, it's coming out on top. At 4K in both Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p, with Windows coming out on top, but closing the gap very slightly. Here's something that we thought we'd add in, because people always ask about performance across the whole stack, including the last gen hardware. The issue here being is we don't have a 6800, we've never had one, so we can't add that card in for comparison. We added these four-way shootouts for you guys to look out, so sit back and enjoy these. They might be a little bit more interesting than the other benchmarks you've seen. We ran our one hour stress test in Furmark and we couldn't get the PowerColor Hellhound 6700 XT above 55 degrees in our climate controlled office. This result was really, really good. The Hellhound is uh, very efficient at cooling. Now, I always mention this, but this is one's pretty important to note that we're running on an open air test system. So the results in a closed system will be far different from what we recorded. We also include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested. As far as power consumption to idle, it was only drawing around six watts of power, and this is so much lower than I thought it would draw. This is really showing the efficiency of RDNA too. We observed it hitting around 185 watts at full tilt over our period of one hour as well. We also observed the Hellhound to be near silent in terms of the fans, but there is an audible coil line, and we saw this over the entire stress testing period. You have to remember again, this is an open air test system. You're gonna hear absolutely everything. In a closed system, you probably won't hear this card. These observations make far more sense than me just spitting out a bunch of numbers on the screen. Regular people just won't understand those numbers and acoustics are only tangible if the card's sitting right next to you so you can hear it. The PowerColor Hellhound 6700 XT uses two PCIe power connectors. It also has an LED switch on it to disable the lighting of the card. It's not RGB and you cannot configure it. The Hellhound is a 2.5 slot card that measures around 305 millimeters in length. As with many cards that we've seen lately, the PCB is not the same length as the cooler itself. As far as pricing, the PowerColor Hellhound 6700 XT is going for around 479 US dollars or around 899 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, this is again subject to availability, which at the time of filming this video is basically zero. Although, as of filming this video, the PowerColor Red Devils are available here in Australia, but by the time this video goes live, you can bet your bottom dollar they're gonna be gone. Anyways, what do you guys think about the 6700 XT? 
I'm uh, not completely sold on the idea of this card yet in Windows from a stability standpoint. Now this is not just with the power color card either. Also with this gigabyte one in the system sitting behind us, we also had a few issues and it's it's a driver thing, right? The Linux drivers were rock solid, but yeah, the pre-release Windows drivers were a little bit flaky. And I know people love to complain about AMD drivers being unstable, but to be honest, this is the first time that I've actually really had any issues with AMD drivers in Windows. Anyways, if you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you hated it, hit the dislike button twice. If you want to get early access to videos like this one, we're on Floatplane. You want to listen to the music that I make for all these videos. Yes, I make the music. Patreon. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think about the 6700 XT. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And I would uh, get some cat in here, but she's asleep. I don't want to disturb her. Unless Claire really wants to wake her up. I but I, I don't think that's fair. Like, she's just having a nice little rest right now. Yeah. Thanks for watching.